All right, so check this out. You've got ivy on your tree and it's causing you some problems. Not only is it unsightly, but if it's left to do its own thing, it will travel all the way up the tree and go out over the leaves and inhibit the production of sugars in your tree, eventually killing it. Plus the weight of the ivy out on the branches can cause even more problems for the tree. And for me personally, ivy is one of the worst things ever. If you look out around here, you can see a whole bunch of these trees, especially the one directly above where you guys are, is just completely covered in ivy and it's just choking all the trees out. So one of the ways to remove it, and I hear people say all the time they want to use poisons. Now, poisons are an effective solution, but really, if you can help it, herbicides aren't something we should be using at all. So we're gonna try and find ways to get rid of the problem without leaning on chemicals. So in this situation, I'm gonna show you one way to remove the ivy that works really well and is less labor intensive as other options. So first I'm gonna get in here with a chainsaw and clean some of this up so I can see what's going on. I'll get to that real quick after I get some PPE ready. just so I can gain access to the stems of the ivy and see what I'm working with. And man, right here in the middle, this is some serious ivy. Look how thick these, these stems are. That's over an inch in diameter. That's getting to that place where it could really start to harm the tree. Now, I feel pretty confident about my skill use a chainsaw to cut these out without damaging the tree underneath but because that's not likely going to be the case for most people I'm gonna use a handsaw which gives me greater amounts of control so what I want to do is get in here and right there you saw where it split and separated because there's a bunch of these hairy roots on the back side as well and as soon as I cut through it creates that separation if you can, pull it out as much as possible. And if I've removed a foot or more of the ivy, that's my goal. Now the reason why you remove more than just cutting it is here I can prove that it's severed. If even one little bit of the skin is connected, we'll call it skin, it's not skin. But if it, even one little bit's connected, it can continue to grow. So I'm gonna go through here, if it's possible to do by hand, Anywhere that I can, I'll be separating it from the tree and giving myself at least one foot of clean area where there's no stems coming up. Here's one on the inside, same thing. Did you hear that snap? That was the pressure of this stem just now popping loose. I'm gonna get down in here. And these are considerable stem sizes bigger than you would normally find. If this was done promptly, as soon as you notice ivy, it's easy to get control of. But here, this ivy's been growing for probably 20 years and finally worked its way toward the house. They left it wild out here in this forested area. We look at the size of these. I mean, that's that's considerable amount of growth on an ivy, and that's too much. So anyway, I've created that foot of space there. I'm getting every little stem out, clearing up the areas where I can see what's going on. If I can grab it and break it, it's not super strong until it gets bigger like these other ones. That's what I'm gonna do. Right there, I didn't damage the bark of the tree underneath. And you can see that in these cuts. 
steer here and there. I didn't damage the bark underneath. So that's why it's preferable to use a handsaw. So if you're a homeowner watching this, I recommend a handsaw like this. For professionals, if you use a chainsaw, you're, you're fine, but just be really careful. It's easy to cut all the way through and damage the tree underneath, and that's our goal is to protect the tree. So. Now I'm not gonna go all the way and show you a finished product because I want this video to be short. But I am literally going to cut a path and clear it all the way around the tree and make sure there are no no other stems of ivy all the way around and once I create that path like that then it's up to the homeowner to maintain that control by every periodically if they're not going to do something more with the rest of the ivy just make sure they pull it away from the tree and it doesn't climb anymore so anyway that's that so if you have an ivy issue this is the way to get it if you want to do the least amount at work and get the most amount done. Now, you could pay someone to climb this tree and manually remove the ivy, which we've done, <coughs> and it's mostly about aesthetics. So you want it to look perfect, you just moved into a house, you're gonna pay an arborist like us to go up in the tree and clean it all the way out. It's very labor intensive, that's why it's so expensive, and it's dangerous too anytime we climb. So this is a better method that you can do yourself. Once this is cut all the way around, this ivy will start to die, it'll turn brown. Once it's completely dead, these roots will lose their grip. So right now, they're, they're pretty stable. I can't move this section right here. But once this dies, I'll be able to rip that right off. And most of the time, I'll, if it hasn't climbed too high, I'll be able to rip it all the way up into the tree and take the whole piece down all at once. And the longer I wait, the easier that is. So if you don't mind it taking a little bit more time, once you come across a situation like this, use this method. It'll work really well. It uh, will take some more time, but at the same time, way less effort and cost you way less money. So keep that one in mind and check in next time.